Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to The Future Is Now podcast. I'm with um, two people that I met just a couple months ago, Tiffany and David. How are you guys doing today? What's up, Spence? Spencer, <laughs> we're doing great. Thanks for having us. I know the first time Spencer and I met, I knew we were going to be the best of friends like instinctively because oh, yeah. of our love for fast food and football. Oh, yeah. yeah, those are oh, the two dude, things. Like, McDonald's, are the, you changed, yep. you actually changed my life. You know why? Because you changed my life because it was the made to order life hack that I never knew about. I'm so, telling you, bro, but we'll, we'll keep it a secret that, you know, that's for yeah, family. Yeah. I, 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 know, I know your listeners are friends, but this is family right here okay <laughs> i know we have to we have to talk about um the super league at some point in the future but not now we, we have limited time yeah, we but uh yeah i i just loved when you guys came out um you know there's there's people that come out um and that i'm excited about and i was excited to meet you guys just because obviously from a distance i've been able to see you guys and everything that you produce is amazing quality and you have the spirit about you but um you know meeting you guys it was like one of those like oh, these guys are, these are my kind of people, you know? And so um, I'm really honored that you guys would come onto the podcast uh, and be here with me. I'm, I know that our listeners are going to be blessed by this. So um, just thank you again for coming on. Of course. Spence, you're the best, dude. We love you, fam. Awesome. So first of all, congrats on the, the new album that just came out, Old Church Basement. You know, it's kind of, honestly, it's kind of annoying because... I literally was talking to Kyle Knox, who you also met here, and I'm like, do these guys ever miss? Do they ever create something that's not absolutely insane? So, um, I mean, I bet that's exciting for you guys um, to just release that. And um, I know we talked a little bit about it uh, when you guys were here, but just like the spirit of the album was amazing. Was that um, a fun project for you guys? And I mean, like... I'm sure like beforehand it's kind of hectic and crazy. And now that it's all out, uh, what does that kind of look like for you guys? Yeah, no, it, it was such an amazing process. Mm-hmm. Just, I think anything that's like collaborative. So bringing in like the Maverick city team mm-hmm. and then kind of meshing with our team, it's just like a beautiful experience to yeah. like yeah. everybody kind of bring their own like unique giftings to the table. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's just in the room and we're just like presenting it as yeah. an offering. And so, well, I think it, I, I'm really thankful because I think the heart of the project really came through. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like this only happened in the room and nobody else gets it. I think like by the grace of God, like it really was like able to be translated. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. So it was an amazing experience. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, I, I walked away from those nights of worship kind of thinking, oh my goodness, like I'm going to tell my kids about what mm. I experienced through the writings of these songs and, and the way that honestly, like just the Holy spirit showed up just like in a way that was so tangible, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it really just kind of left imprints, not only on the people that were, you know, singing the songs or bring the songs forward, but I think it also does on the people listening yeah. to the songs in the cars, you know, at work, at home, um, in hospitals and, and it, 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 it really is one of those things that like it, it reminds you of where you came from, you know, like like your parents helping you sing songs at church or forcing you to sing songs at church. Yeah. But then it also just kind of like reminds you of the stability that you now have found in Christ because of those moments. And then it gave me an opportunity to say, OK, I'm going to do the same for my kids as well. And so like it's a, it's it's one of my favorite things I've ever been a part of. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm curious for you guys, because I bet it's different for everybody, but like, what's your, what's your like songwriting process? Is it like you have to spend like so much time in a room or is it like off the cuff, like randomly throughout the day, like you'll think about something like what's, how do you guys generally come up with, because it's so amazing, but you can also tell it's kind of just out of, you know, even, you know, you guys in Elevation Rhythm, but it's just like out of who you guys are. So what does that process at least look like for you guys? You know, Spence, you know, Tiff is a guru at this type of <laughs> stuff, it. okay? Like she is, we 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 call her the queen. You know? She's okay. like shaking her head at me right now. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I know we write a lot together. We, yeah. we spend a lot of time writing together. And it's, it's honestly, our process looks like bringing in pieces mm-hmm. at a different station, you know? And so for me, it, it's like, okay, spending my own time 
in God or finding creativity um, somewhere in like, maybe it's watching a Netflix, you know, series and some, someone says something random, like you will not let this happen to you, you know? And I'm like, Oh my God, yeah. that sounds like something that like God would yeah. say. And I'm like, oh, I need to write that down. Yeah. And just like randomly hearing different thoughts or melodies throughout my day that I, I pull out my phone and I just kind of throw it in a voice yeah. memo or just write it in one of my notes. And then I'm tip does the same, but her process looks different where I find Netflix inspiration. She finds biblical inspiration, you know, yeah, 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 if, yeah. You, if you follow her, <laughs> she's always just like reading the Bible. And I think there's, there's like a coolness of the two merging together. And when we sit down, it's like a lot of it starts off, off as a conversation, right? Yeah. I think it always kind of starts as what is God like doing in your heart right now? Mm-hmm. Um, and talking about that until we find something that feels like that feels like we need to like dig into that thought. And mm-hmm. a lot of times just having like a producer in the room where we can yeah. just like throw out an idea and they're already kind of like working on the track and we can kind of all bounce off of each other. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like our favorite. Way yeah. And, and it's, it's pretty messy for anyone who's kind of like wanting to get into songwriting and has all these questions in it. Like, I just wanted it to be perfect. It never sounds perfect when mm-hmm. it's being created. It sounds messy. A lot of the time it sounds like blah, blah, blah. I want to say mm-hmm. this. And then it sounds like being brave enough to say something stupid Mm -hmm. to someone else that hopefully unlocks like what you're really trying to say that they hear. And that's being like the relational sign of like who you write with. There has to be a willingness to trust the other person Mm -hmm. with the crappier (laughs) ideas to know that there's gold somewhere in there. And then also just knowing that like it, it just looks different for everyone. Our process might not be the best for you, but that's why you need to just keep figuring it yeah. out for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there is that there's the, uh, like the scary vulnerability of like, Hey, I, I came up with this idea. I think it's great. And for somebody to be like, actually that kind of sucks. <laughs> Bro, it is so vulnerable. We have, I've come to you with so many ideas that I'm like, please don't think I'm lame. But that's the thing about trust the saying is because he will be like, that's lame, but what if we said this and dig a <laughs> yeah. little deeper? And like, you need that. You it need is. That. It's like it, I don't know. It's like bringing your children because, like, because it's weird to say because we You're don't have child. yeah, we don't have any kids right now. But it's mm-hmm. kind of like when you what I've seen some of my, my friends who have kids, you know, where they're like, "This is a picture of my baby. Don't you think it's cute?" Everyone's like. Yeah, that's an ugly baby. I'm sure it'll grow, up. I'm sure it'll grow into its ears one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is legit songwriting. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> I I love that uh, you guys are, you're a great example, especially for young people. Um, and, you know, obviously with uh, with your church, with you guys personally and collectively, like you, you've built up an influence, um, of people that are following you, um, of people that love your church. Um, just because again, like you guys produce really excellent things and you can just feel that spirit from anywhere. And so, um, I kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about, um, the, not the difficulty, but like the responsibility of you guys as stewards of influence. Cause I think if you were to ask anybody, Anybody Mm -hmm. would be like, I want influence. You know, I think that's just like generally like a lot of people want influence, but a lot of people I don't think understand kind of just like the weight that it brings as well and kind of the the liberties that maybe you give up. And so for you guys, um, how do you steward influence knowing that like you have a lot of people watching your life, you know, you have your life is kind of on display in that way. Um, Also being so young, how do you guys steward that yourselves? Well, I think... So much of it, like in the question you asked is Mm -hmm. so wise, like influence is weight and influence is responsibility. So I find myself constantly asking myself like, okay, if God's giving me a place of influence, what am I influencing people to do? Come on. Am I influencing people to just look at me or Mm -hmm. to see all, you know, this lifestyle or whatever. It's like, it has to be about something deeper and bigger and I mean, nobody writes a book for you on how to, maybe there is a book, yeah, maybe but I've never read a book. Just about to write a book right now. <laughs> yeah, about yeah, yeah. What you influence, like, yeah. Especially influence that is God given that yeah. you're not, you know, knocking on a bunch of doors to get, like when God gives you influence, it has to be like 
something you take seriously. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you're right. Like, I think you give up certain, certain rights when you're a leader because not everybody like sees your behind the scenes. They only see this side of you. And so it's really important to like, be really careful about it is every little thing. It is. And, and it's just so, it's like, it's so weird how, um, just corrupted the, the, the world has, you know, created what influence looks like, you know, mm-hmm. cause I think, um, the, the word influencer is being thrown around a lot right now, you know, mm-hmm. and everybody wants to be an influencer, but, but it's just been so minimalized and marginalized to only mean to have a certain number of followers yeah. on a social media account that is connected to brands that you push your audience to try and connect with, you know, yeah. but, but influencer, like uh, being an influencer means so much more than that. Like, yeah. Like you don't have to have hundreds and thousands of followers on social media to actually know that you have influence. Anybody who's got a relationship with anyone who goes up to them to ask them for advice, that means you're an influencer. If you're able to influence one person, you're an influencer. And yet like culture has minimalized that aspect of, of community and relationships to only mean uh, a marketing tool so that yeah. so that businesses can make money and so when you ask us about like the weight of influence we all carry the weight of responsibility of helping other people navigate their lives in a way that hopefully reflects christ yeah. mm-hmm. and if you're and, and if you are uh, an older brother or an older sister you have influence. You're an influencer. Yeah. If you're a best friend and, and all your friends always come to you because they're looking for advice on, you know, should I date this guy or should I date this girl? And they want to know from you. Well, guess what? You, you know, you're an influencer. Yeah. And, and so it, it, it's, it, it, it needs to be removed that like, it's only about a certain number of people that you have on a platform. Now, specifically for us, then it kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of moves in a little bit of a, of a bigger direction because our platform does give us access to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And, but that's why I love how you ask the question. It's how do you steward the weight of influence? Because Mm -hmm. many people only see who they think we are through a screen. And then the moment you say something that doesn't line up with what someone's idea of who you're supposed to be Mm -hmm. lines up with, then all of, all of a sudden your influence is kind of in a shaky place. And, and like, I, I always kind of look at it as, Hey, God has called me to shed light onto who he is. And the mm-hmm. way that I do that is by completely being me. And if that helps people, awesome, but I'm not going to let what people think of me or what people say about me then mm-hmm. become the determining factor of who I'm supposed to be on my social media accounts. Mm-hmm you know that's good yeah Hard that's really good and it's yeah hard. and i think it's important um i love what you said kind of like being yourself living by your convictions um and cuz i mm-hmm. think <laughs> people are going to find reasons to like criticize or hate on something no matter yeah. what Bro. you know you can be do you Bro. you can never be doing the right thing in the eyes of everybody um exactly. so how do you guys kind of deal with like criticism from others when you know, like, okay, this I'm following the spirit of the Lord, like I'm doing good things, but you know, you hear obviously the negativity cause that's just unfortunately the world we live in. So how do you guys deal with that? Because I think that's a huge deterrent as well for young people is the, the fear of like stepping out because all of a sudden when you put yourself out there, now you're, you're kind of at the whims of what everybody says. And so, um, Ooh. I'm sure, you know, I know you guys have we talked about this a little bit, but how do you guys mm-hmm. handle that and keep thick skin, but you know, obviously still a tender heart through that all. Dude, that is such a good question because we're all humans yeah. mm-hmm. and like we seek the approval of others. Like it, 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 God created us to be relational beings, you know? And so what, what do you do when the people that you think you in a relationship with through a screen, all of a sudden, are throwing hate towards you or criticizing you. And then that's when you have to build maturity to know, okay, like whose voices hold more value in my life, you know? And it's like, okay, am I going to listen to so-and-so on social media 
who doesn't know me, who's never been around me, who doesn't send me a text when I'm hurting, who probably doesn't really even pray about me, who has no idea what my mom's name is, who doesn't care that my wife, you know, was in hospital or, or, you know, do I put them and their voice at a higher value than mm-hmm. my youth pastor who understands me, who I always go to, then my best yeah. friend, then my mom, then my dad and realizing that, Yes, social media is a is a culmination of those two communities, but they don't hold the same really cool. value and the same weight. Because when you start to almost like completely build your entire life on the basis of what people who don't really know you say, that's just going to go in a, just a direction you do not want to get into. I don't even have that much more to add to that because I think that's like major key. But do people still say major key? Well, I think, <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm not relevant. Think you, I think you're going to bring it back. <laughs> um, but I've even heard our pastor say, like, like, I don't think God's necessarily sending a prophet to be in my comment section to let me know what God thinks he's Ooh, thinking about me. Timothy, hammer on. I could not agree more. Like, if God is going to speak to you and convict you about something, he's going to do that. But it might not be in the like YouTube comments where all these people are just there to find something to critique. Like, I mean, I can post a Bible verse Mm -hmm. and someone's critiquing, you know, a thought that I felt like the Lord gave me. And it's like, that's not, if God's giving me that thought, like you can disagree and maybe I'm wrong. Like I'm okay to say that, but it's just like understanding exactly like who, whose voice do you value? Yeah. And, and also realizing that the people who are so quick to type something out in the comment section, are never going to have the confidence to actually say it to your face. Mm-hmm. And so like, I'm sorry, like, I'm sure people know this, but social media is full of cowards. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it's what it is because they'll never actually have to have a face-to-face interaction with you. And it's so much easier for me to just type out, yeah, Spencer sucks and <laughs> posting it. Rather than, Cause then when you're standing there and, and I'm like, Spencer sucks, guess what? Spencer's going to reach out and punch me in the nose. And I don't want that. So it's easy to just type it out. And so like realizing like, don't give all the power of your identity to people who will never, ever have the, like just, just the the ability to even say what they believe to your face because they're, they're, they're cowards. They're freaking cowards. Yeah. That's (laughs) the way to say it. I love, I honestly, yeah, that's so great. And I think that isn't so important what you guys are talking about of like, you have to have people in your life that ground you, mm-hmm. you know, and that's where mm-hmm. like real friendships and, you know, having real pastors in your life that you confide in that because those are the voices of life and reason that like at the end of the day, when you're hearing lies, you can go back to and they can tell you like, obviously, like, no, that's that's obviously not true about you. Um, yeah. So for you guys, like what I guess, what does your what is your core look like? You know, I know both of you like are married, but like um, in terms of like friends or people that you confide in, like, is there a number of people in your life? Because I feel like sometimes it's like, oh, I have two. And then but sometimes like I hear about people and they're like, oh, like I have, you know, 15 people I confide in. And I'm like, well, that's it's kind of a lot of people, <laughs> you know. So what have you guys found in your life as like the real the, the people that you trust, like honestly, like with your dreams, with your desires, with your struggles? Like, what does that look like for you guys? Yeah, dude, it's my, you know, 200 close friends on Instagram. Bro. That's, that's <laughs> my community right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. You're, um, you're so right. Like, I guess it's different for a lot of people. But for me, it's first and foremost, my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, like, my wife is my pastor. Like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. Like, I, I can't wait for our wives to meet. I feel like they'll love each other because I've they seen will. how Adrian I, honestly. You. Yeah, Adrian's like, Spencer, God didn't tell you to do that. And you're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's a savage. Absolutely. Exactly. It's the same with my wife. So my wife is definitely one of those people. Um, I have, uh, I worship pastor, pastor uh, uh, Wade Joy. He's one of those people as well that I confide in. And then I honestly have like two best friends, you know, um, Dan and Jackie, who are like, when we're really struggling, like we have a really small circle of people that we mm-hmm. really like desperately confide yeah. in. And then once things kind of, you know, when I need a little bit more help, then, you know, I, I've got like Tiff, I've got Jenna Johnsell, I've got a, you know, just a, a close enough group of friends who know yeah. me that I can be completely vulnerable to. But it always starts, it goes God, wife, pastor, 
and then friends for community when I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like my circle. I would even say like the more influence that God has given me, the smaller my circle becomes. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. And whether that's right or wrong, I just think there there's been a realization of not everybody actually wants the best for your dreams. Mm-hmm. And not everybody actually wants to see you succeed. As harsh as that might be, but like making sure that, you know, you have people in your circle that loved you and believed in you before you had influence Mm -hmm. and they still love and believe in you, you know, at this stage of your life and, and whatever stage you might find yourself in, like have people that have been there from the start of the journey to where you are now when things are good and when things are bad, um, to have those consistent people. But, um, yeah, I'd say my circle is pretty small Mm -hmm. as far as like people you can really, really trust and actually like celebrate your dreams with you and be there in the hard days. Of course, there's like a, a, a lot of people that that feel that way. But mm-hmm. like, I think the the, the real ones are yep. like the ones that have been there for a little while. And she, she's so right. It reminds me of the story of Joseph. You know, when you talk about influence, like Joseph had this dream at such a young age. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even the people in his very own family were so afraid of, you know, what that influence could look like yes. that it all, you know, that they pushed him out. And so when you're thinking about, you know, for anyone who's like, God, I just want influence. I just want influence. Well, sometimes influence looks like being pushed out of your own family and being sold into slavery, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, it's that weird thing, be careful what you ask for. But then, you know, you fast forward over 30 years later in his life and Joseph has a realization of what the influence actually looks like. And it's Mm -hmm. not that he's just like the second in command, you know, you know, under Pharaoh. But he cries when he realizes that the reason why God was giving him the influence was not so that he can climb up in the social status, but so that he can be perfectly positioned to help serve the entire yes. community. And so when he's crying because he realizes this, his brothers are in front of him and they're bowing down to him, which was exactly what he had dreamed up when he was so much younger. But it feels different because there's the weight of yeah. experience and the influence then makes him realize, oh my God, I had it wrong the entire time. Yeah. And so that's what Tiff is, is saying. Hey, be careful who you who you let in close enough because not many people are going to understand you because maybe you're not able to communicate it in the best way. But also because people have their own selfish desires as well for what they want to do with their own influence and they want to latch onto you too. Yeah. And so like influence is a tricky, it's super tricky but when, you, when you're able to choose to have your, your circle with full of people who love you and who want to be around you and who are going to trust you no matter what, it completely changes how you look at yourself. And also influence doesn't change you for the worse. It, it uh, keeps yeah. you grounded with because of the people that you have close to you. Yeah. Awesome. And as we're coming up um, kind of on our time, I just want to kind of end maybe a little uh, how you guys – because what I love about you guys is you love having fun. And so like everything you see on Instagram, just being with you guys in person, hanging out is like you guys laugh and smile and have fun. And so, um, you know, there is a seriousness about ministry, obviously, like when you're talking about like people's souls, you're talking about discipleship, development, but how do you guys, um, keep that, you know, just like that fun spirit about it where it's like, okay, at the end of the day, we can like exhale, relax. Like it's not the end of the world. Um, because I think that's really important when it comes to like longevity in ministry, especially. Yeah. 100%. That's something like we talk about a lot as well as like, if we're giving our lives to serve God's church, like we might as well enjoy it. Cause I just, I just, my belief about God is that he wants us to live full, joyful Come on. lives. Like yep. if, yeah. if your belief about God is that everything's supposed to be so solemn and sorrowful Mm -hmm. and not that that part Mm -hmm. isn't needed but it it goes back to your belief about god like god Mm -hmm. wants you to enjoy your life and to live long full satisfying lives Mm -hmm. and so you might as well enjoy the journey and Mm yeah you know if it's if it has to be perfect if you're if your idol is perfection then Mm -hmm. that's not fun but if your idol is like i'm just gonna serve god the best way i know how Mm -hmm. that can be fun exactly and like what tiff was saying joy is a part of the fruits of the spirit yeah you know and so our thing is, Hey, like we don't want to present, you know, Jesus in a way that just kind of makes people feel like, well, being a Christian means that I'm always going to have to slump around with my shoulders. like this. You know, it's like, no, like God wants you to experience joy. And so we try and have, you know, the 
up is it the utmost or the utmost? Fine. I actually don't know. <laughs> actually, don't know. Someone, someone, help us out. Let us know. Let you know. Let space to know. Is it utmost? <laughs> I think it's I. I think it's I. <laughs> is it up? Okay, cool. Well, we'll go with it right now. You know, it's like, hey, like it, it, it's everything that you do. Like, you know, we we try. Th- there's times for obviously, you know, for us to be somber, but at the end of the day, like we we have devoted our lives to let people, you know breathe and and experience life and life to the fullest and how we choose to do that is to be joyful and so that's why we'll crack jokes when we're around you know if tiffany you know as she's singing and her voice cracks you know she knows there's going to be a video about it and we're going to be sending it around in our group thread you know or when someone is trying to walk up the stairs you know as they're coming up to do you know the worship call if they fall they know there's going to be a video about it and so it's really taking yourself not so seriously that like everyone has to be on like eggshells around you, but it's like realizing we're still human beings. Yeah. Yes. God has called us to be carriers of his glory, but we're all cracked, broken jars. Yeah. And so if you're going to try and, you know, keep up this image of perfection and holiness and thou art not, then it's like people aren't going to be able to be, you know, like re- you're not going to be relatable to people. And so we just like, we're crazy young people who love God and like to have fun. And we'd love to do it in the best way possible that hopefully points people back to who he is. Yes. I love it. Um, I honestly like you guys are just, you're incredible. We're going to um, link in the YouTube or Apple podcast, kind of just like elevation rhythm, your guys' page and everything. So everybody can uh-huh. go see you guys. But honestly, I just want to thank you guys um, a ton for being on the podcast. Uh, you guys just, you live a life that honestly, I would, if I was to point somebody to like a worship lifestyle, it would be you guys. Um, and so I just really appreciate you guys coming on the podcast. It was seriously an honor. And I know our everybody benefited from um, you guys today. Thank you, Spencer. We can't wait to come visit you guys in Seattle. We love you, soon. Spencer. Tell Please. Adrian to say hi. Uh, <laughs> oh, I will for sure. All right. So for everybody else, um, thanks for tuning into the Futurist Now, and we will see you guys next week.